He's the best player of the world. He's just amazing. Yes, I think he's the best. I think he's, he's a very um, caring person. He does a lot of charity. The way people love him means a lot, I think. I love him because he plays with speed. Ronaldo! Cristiano Ronaldo was born on the 5th of February 1985 on the Portuguese island of Madeira. We all know his story, but how did this gangly kid from San Pedro become not only the physical embodiment of modern football, but also a legend of the game, mentioned in the same breath as Pele, Diego Maradona, and of course, Lionel Messi. Over the past 15 years, Ronaldo has evolved as a footballer. So too has his brand, CR7. Now he's a global superstar, with a level of commercial power to match his technical ability. As a result of this immense fame, a subculture has emerged that's become a significant part of people's lives all over the world. When I was eight, nine years old, I remember Cristiano Ronaldo, he did some amazing things on the pitch with some special skills. The pace he had, it was something special. And when he came to Real Madrid in 2009, I really started to follow him because I think, oh, okay, he's a special player, so maybe this is a guy to follow on and learn from on the pitch. 19-year-old Shanta Korbace plays for Odense Bold Club in Denmark and is known as Shanta Ronaldo on social media. When I started creating my Instagram pages and Twitter, I didn't know what to call it, so I just called it Shanta Ronaldo. And from that time, I saw, okay, from that name I became famous, so just to keep it on my pages. In this picture, we see Ronaldo and I uh, in 2015. Um, I was waiting for him at Valdebebas in Madrid um, and actually when I was just walking around suddenly I saw his car he came with his white Rolls Royce but then he said that just keep doing what you do uh, keep believing and it's nice to have fans all over the world and a fan like you um, so yeah this this has been a, a very great picture for me and a picture with with meaning Cristiano Ronaldo sangat uh, pemain yang punya bakat dan punya talenta besar dan bisa segalanya dalam arti bisa bermain bola dan saya melihat uh, dari karakter bermain bolanya cukup luar biasa di situ saya juga penggemar bola dan saya melihat punya talenta besar dan dia menjadi bintang besar seperti sampai saat ini nah saya kira itu sehingga saya dasar saya memberi nama anak saya Karena saya dan pada saat pertama kali anak saya lahir, tanggal 7 September, jam 2 pagi, saya besoknya memberi akte kelahiran anak saya. Saya berdiskusi dengan istri saya, ini loh nama anak saya. Nah, namanya Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo, apakah Ronaldo senang dengan nama yang uh, Cristiano Ronaldo sebagai pemain sepak bola dunia? Iya, senang sekali. Terus yang Ronaldo uh, pikirkan tentang Real Madrid, timnya seperti apa? Real Madrid itu tim terbaik dan terbesar di dunia untukku, menurut aku. Terus menurut Ronaldo sendiri, Cristiano Ronaldo pemain dunia itu pemainnya seperti apa? Pemain yang terbaik di dunia dan te, dan menginspirasi aku untuk menjadi pemain terkenal di dunia. Pernah aku menjelaskan saat menjelaskan bapak saya di menggemar Cristiano Ronaldo dari MU sampai sekarang. Saya dari kecil sudah uh, bahkan saya menghadiahkan dia pada saat lahir ada sebuah bola dan saya kira dia harus jadi pemain bola dimanapun dia akan berada dan saya punya rencana setelah kuliah nanti beliau akan saya bawa ke Brazil untuk belajar satu tahun di sana. I really love Ronaldo because he can score. 
he has good sense, he can dribble. My favourite memory is when he was injured um, during a game. He was supporting the, his team from the outside by directing them where to, where to run and where to do things. The goal against Galatasaray. He was dribbling against two players, I think, and then he shoots from the left in the right corner. Incredible goal. Three or four months ago, I remember that it was the, the best moment in the final in Cardiff. He played uh, perfectly, and for us it was the, the best moment, sure. I've seen him uh, at uh, Manchester United returning with Real Madrid, and uh, well, the, the, the way people loved him, it tells a lot about Cristiano Ronaldo. It's impossible to consider Ronaldo's social impact without focusing on his football. Over 600 career goals, all-time leading goalscorer in the Champions League, but Ronaldo's records will only stand for as long as time allows. Perhaps his real legacy will be his influence on technique, specifically the way he strikes free kicks. Dwayne Mitchell runs DSC Elite Football Academy in Huddersfield in the north of England and has used Ronaldo as a model for his coaching ethos. Altogether, I've been coaching over 12 years. I'd say the last four years, it's really, really, really taken off. Started coaching at a local club, what was local to me. Did quite well with the local children, and a couple of kids got signed. Someone said to me, you know, we're going to work at another local club. They give me 10 kids at the age of five and six, and um, 10 of them got signed to clubs. And then from that, parents would be like, Dwayne, you want to give it a real go, sort of thing. So I quit the electrics, sold my half 32, and give it like a real good go. Started off with something so simple, saying like Ronaldo touches, then it turned into the double scissor, you know, Ronaldo chop, and he's got a whole host of moves. He's a very creative player. So you could just base a lot of your football sessions around using his name and things he does. Demonstrating Ronaldo's free kick technique is DSC assistant coach, Lewis Whittam. He stays kind of straight onto the ball. He gives himself some good time and distance between the ball. Obviously, his big breath gives him calm and composure. His foot stays pointed down, his knee stays a little bit bent, but it's not like a usual strike where you're striking up and through the ball to get the ball off the floor. It's like a little punch, like a little, little sharp dart of a punch. So when he hits the contact of the ball, it doesn't really follow through. It's that sort of thing, when, you, when they punch it, the acceleration of the strike, it just goes up, it goes down, it goes left and right. It can kind of do anything. How long have you been hitting a ball like that? Well. The first, the first day I saw Ronaldo strike, I, I used to sit at the table when I was watching on a Sunday, eating, watching Ronaldo at Man United and a few times I'd go on YouTube and look at his best free kicks and I thought, I had a big netting garden, only a small garden though, so I'd go out practice hitting it and a few times I'd get the ball where it wanted to be, at school I'd do it, college, I, I still practice sometimes. I'll set myself a challenge, like kind of what Ronaldo does, he'll say, in his head he'll think, Top right, top left. Look at where keeper's positioning is. Right, percentage-wise, you alright? Uh, not always. You're never, you're never gonna get a, a ten out of ten. It's never, you're never gonna be perfect. But usually aiming for more than you got last time. If you got three last time, aiming for four. It, it's about progressing further, getting, getting, getting more every week. That's how you're gonna improve. Ronaldo, take 100 balls out at Manchester United alone. If it were raining, Asher turf, you might get 20 out of 100, but. Every week, he'll go back 30, 40, and that's why he scores free kick goals that are absolutely extraordinary. If you look at something so simple like when, as a child, it would be called a Maradona 7 to me. You know, right foot kick up, left foot kick up, right knee, left knee, right shoulder, me right shoulder, left shoulder, head, a Maradona 7. Things like that's called a Ronaldo 7 now, you know. It's a Ronaldo chop, Ronaldo scissors, Ronaldo step overs. I think the modern day football is kind of like based around someone like him. He's tall, he's sleek, he's, um, he's aggressive, he's, he's cool, he's stylish. And I think, um, especially in a country like England where we're based on like passing, a bit more receiving, he has come and changed a lot in England. It's not just England that's been influenced by Ronaldo's playing style. His period of sustained success has coincided with a global rise in the popularity of freestyling. Ya he dicho, Ronaldo es mi ídolo, es mi mayor ídolo. Y básicamente le, le sigo desde que juega en el United, le seguía muchísimo desde que empezó a jugar en el United, pero cuando surgió ese chico que metía todas las faltas, que se regateaba a todo el mundo, que driblaba en la banda como nadie. El freestyle ha sido estos últimos dos años, más o menos dos años y medio, pero lo que es fútbol llevo jugando desde que tengo cuatro años.
2009, exacto, por esa época. Y yo me tragaba todos los vídeos que hacían, todas las recopilaciones que hacían de Ronaldo en, en YouTube. De los regates, de todas las faltas, y a mí eso me encantaba. Y verle venir aquí a la, a la Liga Española, pues también me suponía a mí un, un atractivo muy grande. Un jugador como él, que siempre hacía muchos trucos, ahora ya menos, pero un jugador que siempre ha hecho sus trucos, sus regates, sus tal, ha ayudado al mundo del freestyle. A ver, yo creo que sí. Si tuviera que elegir un jugador que ayuda al mundo del freestyle, diría Ronaldinho, ¿sabes? La campaña de Yoga Bonito, que fue la primera que salió. Eh, los niños que no saben lo que es el freestyle ven a uno de sus hilos haciendo y quizás les interesa saber qué está haciendo su, su mayor inspiración. Aunque hay a veces que se critica, y a mí me parece en parte malo, a, a, a gente como Cristiano Ronaldo, puesto que... Es verdad que, que muchas personas dicen, no, Cristiano Ronaldo es buenísimo en freestyle. Hay que reconocer que al no dedicarse al freestyle, él no es, si nos fijamos únicamente en conceptos de freestyle, no es buenísimo ni bueno, es no, normalito. Pero para nosotros supone una gran exposición. There's been a lot of great players. I love Raúl too, but Ronaldo is definitely, I mean, he's beat every record, so. If we're talking about numbers, he's he's the best. I've started to respect him a bit more, not just because of the football that he plays, but also the other things he does in his life. I mean, I know recently he's just opened his own hotel chain and he's getting into the fashion trade as well. He's doing a lot of stuff outside of football. He's really brought an image, an icon of like the previous one was Raul. Cristiano's like more of a global brand for the team, so he brings a lot of uh, notoriety to them for the whole world. But I think even outside of football, he's always giving to charity and he's a nice person. I love Ronaldo because he's handsome, he knows how to play, he can play for all teams, he's a real model. In 2006, Ronaldo opened his first fashion boutique as part of brand CR7 on his native island of Madeira. In March this year, the company was valued at 54 million euros. But it's on social media where Ronaldo really represents big business. He produced almost a billion dollars for his sponsors in the 12 months until June the 1st this year. Brands editor for Digiday, Seb Joseph, says it's down to the fact that there's no real strategy to his marketing campaign. I don't think he necessarily has a sophisticated commercial strategy. I think the fact of the matter is he is that big of star that he can sell anything from underwear to Egyptian steel. His brand is kind of all encompassing and I think you know, him and his team have been quite savvy and also aggressive in how they've ex ex exploited that. I don't think, you know, they're, they're a team that will say, refuse a sponsorship deal because it's not on brand. I don't think that's kind of how they, how they sort of operate. In case in point, you can just look at, you know, the, just the endorsement that he does and there's no real, there's no real pattern there. When you compare someone like Ronaldo to, you know, one of the popular footballers of his time, David Beckham, I think what really sets them apart, what's really moved the goalposts, is social media. Um, I think when Ronaldo was sort of first becoming noticed by people as this sort of amazing talent, it was kind of when Facebook and Twitter were first coming around. I think a big part of it is because Ronaldo has that reach, um, rightly or wrongly, that's what brands buy into. Such as the extent of Ronaldo's reach across social media, a simple post can completely transform a business, as King's Domain Barbershop in Melbourne found out firsthand. So he came in twice, and the first time he came in, I had no warning. I didn't know that he was coming. He just walked in off the street. He was sort of pretty well disguised. He had a hat and some sunglasses on. And um, yeah, it wasn't until he sat down and he took his sunglasses off that I was like, wowza, that's Ronaldo. So this shop here had only been open for five months when he first came in. Uh, we were still reasonably quiet, but obviously there were a lot of tourists that came to Melbourne because that's where the games are all being played. And after he came in, it just literally went bananas. Uh, we posted one photo on our social media that got reposted thousands of times. We ended up in the newspaper, on websites, both nationally and internationally. Um, and it brought a lot of clients in and it was, it was really, it was quite massive for the business and the brand. He was really, really nice, a very genuine guy. Like he wasn't, um, I think he sort of made out in the media to be a little bit sort of uh, 
for lack of a better word, I guess full of himself a little bit. But I didn't get that vibe off him at all. Like he's just really genuine, really nice. He was just like anyone else really. It's that kind of, it's the attitude that he's got. He has a certain swagger, which I think attached to his actual ability as well. A, a lot of young kids really buy into that. And he's also kind of built a bit of a kind of bad boy image, sort of almost the person that people love to hate. I think he's really pandered to that. He's been quite smart about it. Ronaldo has that, that reach and he, you know, regardless of what anyone can say, he is the world's best player at the moment. And, you know, you can't really argue with that. It's not unusual for footballers to become style icons, especially players of Ronaldo's calibre and commercial power. But what impact has the presentation of image had on this generation? Journalist and author Mark Simpson, renowned for coining the phrase metrosexual, suggests Ronaldo represents an evolution of masculinity. Ronaldo is a totem, an aspirational figure in the sense that he has apparently everything, youth, I was getting on a little bit in footballing terms. Money, talent, fame, looks, and this body. In a sense, you know, what, what I call metrosexuality wasn't, wasn't about men getting in touch with their feminine side. It was about men becoming everything. But, but also, I think it's pretty clear that, that, that Ronaldo, like Beckham before him, enjoys it. And so do lots and lots of other young men. You know, they've grown up in a world in which the idea of um, male self-objectification, to use a clumsy phrase, is just normal. Do you think it's, uh, you think it's unusual that you would have like pictures of Ronaldo on, on your bedroom wall? You know, you're like 19 years old now. Like, well, think I think no, because there's many people who decide to have more posters than me, and actually, I'm a guy. Who don't like to have many things in my room. And this one's Shanta. As you were saying in Denmark, they could be quite understated, the people. Yeah. Do they, do they recognize you as being a bit more flash? They can. They can think so, but again, I like to do this, and this is the important thing. Do you buy any other products that are Ronaldo's? Do you, do you wear anything that Ronaldo endorsed? Well, I actually buy his underwears because they feel very good. Uh, but also socks uh, and the perfume too. You think uh, that he has perhaps inspired a culture change in male grooming? I think, um, I, I definitely think that that's true in Europe, but I wouldn't say that it sort of translates to Australian um, grooming as such. Like he's very sort of um, manicured. I guess, and really always well done up. And I think if you walk around Melbourne, guys are kind of trying to be anything but manicured and really perfect, whereas he is like done up to a T. Pues lo primero el físico. Dada mi estatura y demás, tengo que tener una constitución atlética. Después yo siempre voy a cortarme el pelo con su peluquero, siempre tengo que tener una estética de ir afeitado, tengo que ir bien vestido, no puedo ir una pinta digamos desarreglada y yo tengo que ir lo más similar entre comillas a él que no digo que yo sea él ni quiera suplantarle la identidad ni mucho menos yo soy Diego pero tengo que tener bastantes parecidos en cuanto al pelo en cuanto a la forma de vestir tengo que hablar correctamente no puedo no puedo digamos tener una imagen inapropiada relacionándome con Cristiano Ronaldo ¿En qué consiste exactamente el trabajo de Diego? ¿Tú qué tú haces eh anuncios enteros como cristiano o, o cómo es exactamente lo que te exigen para hacer en el trabajo? No, la gente está muy confundida porque la gente se piensa que cristiano directamente ni se presenta a los rodajes y eso es mentira. Yo, él hace su parte, digamos, y yo lo que tengo que hacer antes es preparar todas estas cámaras que requieren un, un largo periodo de tiempo, hay días de hasta 16, 17 horas de preparación, para el cual, como él trabaja y no puede estar tanto tiempo, las mismas horas que yo, yo preparo todas las escenas que él va a hacer antes para que él cuando llegue lo realice lo más rápido posible y comprobando que todo está correcto, que no hay ningún problema de que se pueda hacer daño, por ejemplo, o pueda sufrir algún tipo de lesión. Entonces él hace esas escenas en las cuales son más importantes, que es, digamos, él es la pieza fundamental, obviamente, su cara y su rostro, 
y luego hay planos más pequeños, por ejemplo, como pueden ser de piernas o de espaldas, que no requieren tanta importancia que el esté. The game plan is to have your own fragrance, your own underwear, um, and and essentially you're selling you're selling bits of yourself to the public. Um, you have turned yourself into this hot commodity, and uh, then you monetize it. And that you see that happening at a, a sort of <clears throat> you know a much more pedestrian level in the lives of a lot of young men. Tú vives como a día de hoy con 25 años podría, porque yo vivo con mis padres, no tengo gastos excesivos de casa ya que yo vivo con ellos. Eh, podría vivir, bueno, tampoco es vivir muy bien, podría digamos mantenerme, pero yo aparte de este trabajo tengo varios trabajos más, más pequeños para poder compaginar todo. Que lo que yo me dedico es, yo soy entrenador de baloncesto, soy entrenador de unas chicas y de una universidad y bueno, también soy entrenador personal, quiero masajista, de momento tengo trabajos más pequeños para una vez, si termina todo el tema de trabajo con Cristiano, pues yo poder seguir adelante con mi trabajo. Despite his many talents, one of Ronaldo's strongest abilities is how he seems to be so unaffected by the hatred and criticism he receives. Trolls are an unfortunate consequence of his immense popularity. But for Shanta, who uses Ronaldo's name on his Instagram and Twitter accounts, the hatred he receives hits a lot closer to home. It's a little bit of shame because I did not do these people anything wrong. Even, for example, Ronaldo or Benzema, Luka Modric, anyone who gets these kind of hates, they don't do anything wrong. They just try to do their things and but again, it's normal, it's part of it, because they invite you, they're jealous. Your mum and your dad don't ever get upset Oof. by what people are saying? No, not anymore. Uh, of course, sometimes they can say, oh, why this again? But from time they learn that it's, it's something you just have to leave. We, don't, we can't do anything about it. This is the world we live in today. Um, but again, they, they're also a huge help for improvement because they will make you stronger. So when I started following him, um, I, I saw that people, they say, oh, why do you follow him? Uh, just for no reason. And the reason is that I want to be better at football, <laughs> nothing else. People saying you want to look like him, you want to do that, this is completely none of my business. People can say what they want as long as I know what I've, I, I'm doing. One of the reasons people attack Ronaldo is due to his rivalry with Lionel Messi. Why? Because competition sells. Apple and Microsoft, Coke and Pepsi, Ali and Frazier, Biggie and Tupac. It's not a new phenomenon, but one that's left an indelible mark on footballing history. I'm sure you're asking in terms of the comparison versus Messi as well, right? Messi's role on the field, everyone knows, is completely, uh, completely bigger than Ronaldo's. Uh, assists, goals, everything. I had a lot of polemics with my friends. No, in reality, he's a chulo, he's a tal. But I think if you like a player, you have to defend him to death. I think he's far better than Messi and everyone else. He was literally the only football player that I knew the name of and knew the face of. Messi could walk in this store and I had no idea who he is. Because he worked, he works, and that's he like Messi, hard. he worked hard. Personally, I think Messi's better, I just prefer watching Ronaldo. Ronaldo is the best in the world in terms of finishing, but so is Messi. But that's where the comparison stops. In terms of assists and playmaking, Messi is uh, at a higher level. How did I know who he was? Okay, so my best friend in year eight was Portuguese. <laughs> and. Uh, and she used to like have pro like little pictures of him in, in her school diary and stuff like that. Messi is much more calm, much more tranquil in the camera, but Ronaldo, with the celebrations, with the just here, with this actuation, makes it generate that kind of discussions, to say it in a good way. You look at someone like Messi, and he's obviously a prodigy, right? That's just the God given talent. I think Ronaldo is a great player, similar to kind of what David Beckham was like. I think Ronaldo is a great player, but has obviously worked that much harder to sort of elevate himself to kind of greatness. You know, you look at 
what Ronaldo was like at 17. And you look at kind of him now, and physically he's different. Fans, especially the young fans, really buy into the fact that he has had to work very, very hard, and he still does work very hard maintaining that level of greatness. I think it's great to have these two uh, in our game today to show people that it's not only about a rivalry, but it's like helping each other to become better and better.